Hello and welcome to a fresh new edition of our Made for YouTube series and today I'm going to talk about some of the key things to check or keep track of when you're selecting equity schemes. So now the first thing of course is to check the track record and the management expertise of the fund house and the historical performance of the fund manager. Now once you find that everything is in order in that department, you must know which kind of equity scheme it is. There are 11 types of equity funds which range from large cap to mid cap, small cap, there's multi cap, flexi cap, value or contra funds, focus funds and you know so on and so forth. So first things first, find out which type of fund you have and what is the nature of this fund. For example, a large cap fund can invest a minimum of 80% in large cap stocks and the rest can be in mid or small caps. Likewise, a mid cap fund needs to invest minimum of 65% in mid cap stocks same for small cap funds they can invest minimum of 65 percent in small cap stocks and you know so on so sebi has specified the criteria like this which differentiates one type of scheme from the other so you should know what is the nature of your fund and then it becomes easier to understand the investing rationale that's being used the next thing you want to check is the risk level now sebi has mandated that all equity funds will now be categorized as either high risk or very high risk. So, you know, there's not much of a difference there. But within this, it's important to check the standard deviation of the scheme and compare it to its category average. This will tell you exactly how volatile your fund is and how much of a variance you can expect in terms of return. So basically, lower standard deviation will show more consistency and returns and a higher ratio will mean that a larger swing can be likely. For me personally, sharp ratio is also quite meaningful, which provides an idea of risk adjusted returns. So how much risk was taken to deliver those returns? So naturally, a fund which takes lower risk to deliver superior returns will be a better bet. Also for me, checking the risk is more important than return, which is why I've spoken about it first. Now, when it comes to returns, it's important to check the consistency of returns and not just the near term performance of the fund. So you can look at a metric like say a three year or a five year rolling return, which will provide a much better understanding of whether or not the returns have been consistent. So when you're checking returns, it's also important to compare it to the category average. You know, how have your peers uh, with similar attributes done in the same period is important to judge how the fund manager is navigating the given environment. By the way, much of the data points that I'm talking about can be easily found online. In fact, you'll find them quite read readily available on a website like moneycontrol.com. Now, for diversified equity funds, it's important to check the allocation to, you know, large, mid and small cap stocks. Basically, you want to know what is the orientation of that scheme. So a conservative investor will want higher large cap allocation. An aggressive investor may be okay with higher mid and small cap orientation and so on, uh, so on. So also the number of stocks and the stock churn are other important factors that you'll want to consider. Now number of stocks shows the diversification within this scheme. You know, which are the high conviction stock ideas with more weightage? This will normally be the top 10 holdings. Now when we compare the number of stocks to the category average, it will reveal whether the portfolio is as diversified or more concentrated compared to peers. And in some cases where you find that the variance is quite large, you may want to investigate the reason for this as well. Next is the stock churn. This is measured through the turnover ratio and it tells us how often a fund manager is exiting their current holdings and replacing them with new stocks. It basically reveals how much the underlying portfolio has changed in a year. A lower turnover ratio indicates longer holding period and it means that, you know, stocks are being bought based on high conviction after thorough research and not just random buy and sell decisions which are being taken. As well, lower turnover means lower expenses. So that's also a plus. Savvier investors may also want to check for the capture ratio. Now, the capture ratio measures outperformance or underperformance of the fund during bull and bear markets. The upside capture ratio measures the performance when the benchmark is up and naturally the down market capture ratio measures the performance when the benchmark is down. So for up market capture ratio, higher is better because it means the fund manager is able to generate higher than market benchmark returns when the market is rising. And for down market capture ratio, lower is better because it means that the fund manager is able to provide 
some downside risk protection when the market is falling. Another point to remember is that if you're selecting funds based on star ratings, then you must know that star ratings are only the first step to narrow down the selection. They cannot be used exhaustively by themselves. All the points that I spoke about must also be necessarily looked at besides star ratings. As well, you know, for example, a small cap fund with a five star rating is still a risky proposition. It's just that within the universe of small cap funds, a five star scheme may be superior. And one last thing to remember is that funds cannot be selected in isolation. All schemes should be complementary to each other once they come into a portfolio. You cannot look at five funds individually and find that, you know, they all fulfill the criteria and therefore you can invest in all of them. You must check things like, you know, what is the stock overlap between these funds? What is the overall risk level of the combined portfolio? You know, what investing styles uh, do your selected funds follow? Because you don't want to stuff your portfolio entirely with either value funds or growth funds because ideally you want a mix. So that some part of your portfolio is always performing across different market cycles. So as you can see, selecting a fund is no mean feat. There are quite a lot of metrics which savvy investors uh, must consider. But you know, what I've spoken about is just a very basic checklist which must be followed. And you know, don't be deterred or intimidated by this process because all of the effort must be made at the time of fund selection and then it's way easier for you to just rebalance and keep track of your portfolio. So I urge you to get involved with this process and spend a few weekends in correctly creating a portfolio to prevent repenting later. So I hope you found this useful. Thanks very much for watching. Stay safe.